how would Jesus want us to pray? He teaches us how in the Lord's Prayer. Today's lesson, you're going to learn how to pray the right way, the way that Jesus wants you to pray. Hi, I'm Pastor Brian with Empowered Christian Ministries, here with another lesson from our Driveway Discipleship Program, empowering you to be a better follower of Jesus 10 minutes a day. How would Jesus want us to pray? Well, Jesus tells us how. One of Jesus' disciples asked this very question, saying, Lord, teach us to pray, as John, referring to John the Baptist, taught his disciples. Jesus' response is recorded in Matthew 6, verses 5 through 15, and in Luke 11, verses 1 through 13. Jesus gave a simple prayer. Historically, it's been referred to as the Our Father, or the Lord's Prayer. It's the oldest recitable Christian statement, said by Jesus, circa AD 29 or so, written down by the biblical authors, circa AD 60 or so. Versions of this prayer have been used for centuries in liturgical practice, which is church reading and reciting. The sample shown below that I'll go through is the most commonly accepted English rendering using lingo from the King James Version. Jesus taught his followers, one, to pray with right heart motives. It's very important. Two, to pray persistently as faithful, redeemed children. Three, the Lord's Prayer. We'll examine each one of these. Number one, pray with right heart motives. Matthew 6, 5, Jesus says, When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Jesus criticizes their selfish motivations. Our motivation should be communication to God, flowing out of a right relationship with God. See, four good types of prayer are ACTS, A-C-T-S, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. I talk about these in another lesson. If your goal is to be seen by others, being thought of as spiritual or religious or lofty, then your motive is wrong. The Lord's Prayer is not an incantation to repeat repetitively like it has some kind of special power. Matthew 6, verses 7 through 8, Jesus said, And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they'll be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Our prayers shouldn't be vain repetition, babbling on as though God is impressed by the quantity or duration or volume of our prayers. God won't answer our prayers unless they're driven from the pure motivations of our heart. See James 4.3. Jesus also reminds us that through him, God the Father is also our Father. We're his children, and he knows us, and he loves us. He already knows what we need even before we ask him. So prayer isn't for you to update God as though he doesn't know everything already. He's all-knowing. The purpose of prayer is to spend time with God, growing our relationship as we talk and share our concerns with him. Number two, pray as God's faithful, forgiven, persistent children. Prayer is only successful with faith, in the one the prayers are given through, the Son of God, and the one the prayers are directed to, God the Father. 
The prayer assumes we believe in him and trust the gospel. It's only through faith in Jesus that we are forgiven of our sins, made righteous, and can now boldly come before God's throne with our requests. See Hebrews 4.16. It's only through our spiritual rebirth and our adoption into God's family that God the Father becomes our Father. So whoever wants to come to God must first believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. See Hebrews 11, 6. Matthew 6, verse 6 says, When you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, this isn't to suggest that group prayer among believers isn't good. We, we see this in Acts 1, verse 14, and 4, verse 31. You know, so prayers should be accompanied by gratitude, faith, and righteousness. See James 5, 15, Matthew 6, verses 14 through 15. It says, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So pray as God's beloved children, humble because He's forgiven all our sins by His grace alone. See Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 10. Prayers will be hindered if we're unwilling to forgive others. Our willingness to forgive is a sign that we believe the gospel and are grateful for God's grace to us by extending that grace to others. Jesus also encourages us to be persistent in our prayers and keep asking. In Luke 11, verses 5 through 13, he gives a story about this. Number three, pray the Lord's Prayer. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. First, we acknowledge our adoption and God as our Father in heaven. Hallowed is the same as holy, meaning unique, or set apart. We recognize and celebrate that God is holy, has no equals, and is Lord and sovereign over everything. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This has two meanings. First is our desire for God's kingdom to come to earth in all of its fullness. For Jesus' return for his bride, to set everything straight, and to usher us into eternal life. Second, it's our desire for God's kingdom to come to the earth right now, in greater measure and increasing influence towards repentance, godliness, and restoration. Give us this day our daily bread. We acknowledge that everything we have, health, shelter, relationships, family, even the daily food we eat, is completely dependent on God's provision. It's a gift from Him. We don't deserve it, and we we need to be grateful for it, whether we have an abundance or a lack. See Philippians 4, verses 11 through 12. Matthew 6, 12 says, Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Luke eleven four says, Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. The traditional KJV, King James Version, uses the word trespass here which is constructively blending the words translated debt in Matthew and sin in Luke. 
our sin is a massive debt against God. It's so large, we can't pay him back. But Jesus paid our debts in full. We keep asking God for forgiveness daily because we need it. But at the same time, we are already receiving his forgiveness continually through Jesus. This prayer is an ongoing reminder of our constant need for God's grace and the gratitude for the grace we're already receiving. And it's also a commitment to extend this grace and forgiveness to others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We're holy and righteous children of God, but we still live in the flesh in a fallen world. We need the constant guidance of the Holy Spirit to live victoriously over sinful temptation and the Lord's deliverance and protection from the evil one, Satan, and every other evil. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one and every evil. For thine be the glory, the kingdom, and the power forever. Amen. Make it your daily practice to pray the Lord's Prayer every day. I love to do it right before I go to bed. And again, it has to come from a right relationship with God, so make sure you're right with God. And it has to come from a pure heart and right motives, so make sure you're right in your motives. If you would like a free two-page PDF of this lesson and a couple of action steps to get started, all you have to do is click the link below or visit empoweredchristian.org forward slash driveway dash discipleship, and I'd be happy to email you a copy. If you enjoyed this lesson, please like it and share it with others. Come back regularly and start tomorrow getting a new lesson every single day to grow as a follower of Jesus. And as always, be empowered and go advance the kingdom of God today. God bless.